G'day guys, welcome back to the channel to today's video review. Uh, what I have here, uh, of course, as you can see here, is a Pro Trek piece. Now, uh, this is a watch that I've introduced uh, before. Uh, that's the uh, external cardboard box that it comes in. Uh, and then it, it comes with this, you know, rather hefty module uh, manual, which is multilingual, but really it's, it's one of the most hefty uh, Casio module manuals that I've, I've ever seen. So, you know, that, that testifies to the features that we will go through today. So this is the internal uh, MDF style uh, box. You know, if it's not MDF, it's something very similar to it. Uh, and you just lift the cover off and, you know, there we have it. I've already unpacked this uh, on the earlier video, of course, that you can check out. Uh, I'll put a link here. So let's just put that aside there. Okay, so what we have here for review today is this ProTrek PRW-6100 model. This uh, specific model is the 6100Y-1, uh, indicating the, the color uh, and material variation. And now I, I can't, for the life of me, um, find out what the exact US MSRP is. You know, I, I believe it is around 600, but I can't be sure. I know uh, quite definitely there is a fuel composite strap version, so with a FC uh, strap with sapphire glass uh, that has an MSRP of 750 US. Uh, but I, I don't know exactly what this is. I, I, I think it is going to be around 600, but correct me if I'm wrong. So what we have here in this uh, ProTrek digital analog version is a 51 0.6 millimeter wide. Now that's from the flat part of the crown to the tip of the triple sensor cluster on the left here. So 51.6, a smidgen under 52 millimeter black casing. You know, they describe it as steel and resin. I don't know if that's actually a resin coat on the, on the case here. That feels like steel and it feels like could be PVD steel. It certainly feels different from the resin strap. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what that is, but I'm pretty sure that bezel is a black uh, PVD, uh, you know, or iron plating uh, treatment on that bezel there. Uh, now the construction is, is screw uh, is screws on the back here. Now it's covered by these uh, these fillers here. You can't see the screws, but I can tell you there are four screws holding that case back, and you can see the ProTrek uh, module five four seven zero. Now that's the quartz multifunction module 5470 there, 200, uh, 100 meter water resistance rating, I should say. Now it does have this uh, smart access crown, which is actually a screw in crown. You know, I can, you know, actually, you can see it, it actually screws in and out there, right? So I'm just gonna screw that back in. Um, now the, the case body itself, now 51.6 wide, but the case body itself, if you take it say from that indentation there, uh, which is perhaps a more accurate representation of the case body, it's actually 46 millimeters. So you know, you get, it's not, it's not a circle that is 52 millimeters wide, it's more like a circle that's 42. And if you measure it at the bezel, that's actually at the black part of the bezel, that's actually 43.5 millimeters. You know, get a, get a better idea of the size and how it would sit on your wrist for you. Um, so it, it's got this black, layered dial that you can see there you know there are there are there is layering on it you now particularly of course the lcd and then the hour markers which are filled with uh, casio neobright not the most fantastic loom i don't think it's as good as seiko or citizen loom but it's it's okay uh you know it functions relatively uh well enough for my purposes overnight um and you can see you know the the logo of ProTrek is, is raised there and a few more textures around the dial that you can see there. Okay, so um, there is a positive LCD. Now some models uh, I think come in a negative uh, display uh, or at least the 6100Y1B does. Uh, most, of the, most of the 6100 range comes in positive LCD. This is a super twisted pneumatic LCD. Now, I don't know very much about LCD technology, but I believe that is a technology that gives superior 
contrast and legibility at the expense of speed of display changing. And I think that's probably suitable for an application like this because you don't need speed of display, you just need clarity. And certainly, you know, the positive LCD reads pretty well. You know, I've not had any complaints with the legibility despite the relatively small size of that display there. This does have dual LED lighting. So there's a there's a LED backlight behind the LCD and there is a LED light right at the six o'clock position that that uh, lights up the dial for reading in night time uh, and that also charges slightly that uh, neo bright loom that you've seen there above the uh, glass uh, is is mineral glass this one doesn't have sapphire but some of the models in the range does have sapphire and surrounding that is a black uh, PVD steel bezel uh, which you can see it's actually inscribed with the 30 uh, different time zones including UTC at 12 o'clock there uh, and just below that you can see the orange colored uh, steel part that's actually aluminium uh, sorry not steel that's actually an aluminium uh, offset bezel so you know it's nicely implemented to to give that a dual layered bezel which is part of the feature of this particular range the movement uh, you've, you've seen the module is quads module 5470 really a, a multi-function tough solar triple sensor and, and you can see where it's, uh, it doesn't actually say tough solar anywhere specifically uh, on the watch but you know it's definitely a, a solar powered module tough solar meaning it powers uh, the triple sensor function adequately uh, and this module interestingly is the same as the one used in the PRX 8000 range the top of the line Manaslu ProTrek uh, models which uh, retail for upwards of a thousand I think 1500 with titanium bands uh, those models the the movement is a tough movement now in Casio parlance tough movement means it's got a hybrid mount to withstand shocks it's got an auto home hand position correction if the hands uh, move off it can auto correct it it's got multi backs ba multi band six radio control for atomic time syncing in uh, based on terrestrial antennas and then uh, the the nomenclature of tough movement also means that it it will have the tough solar power supply it does have the smart access crown now that means it's a uh, I guess it's a, a digital electronic based control it's not a, a you know it doesn't control any uh, mechanical movement of course it is a digital electronic control to set various functions in this particular watch and that re refers to the crown access uh, now in terms of going through the functions uh, I'll just do this quickly because I've gone through this with the, the range man before similar functions so touching the two o'clock uh, uh, button there you get compass right and as you know already uh, to the back and right of me is the north and you can see the second hand is now pointing north all right go back to time this button gives you the altimeter all right so it's, i guess it's a bit overestimating at the moment but that's your altimeter rating and if you press that button it gives, gives you the change indicator so you know it, apparently i've ascended a bit uh, and you can see just inside the sub dial there i don't know whether it comes through there's the uh, uh, over and under reading it's, it's probably quite hard to read there it's actually inside the minute markings over and under for the altitude uh, indicator change there okay go back to time again and then we'll go through different modes that you can see on the mode sub dial in the 10 o'clock position first up barometer okay nice and easy with the uh, trend marking there the uh, barometer uh, the range is uh, 260 to uh, 1100 hectopascals it does have showing uh, differential graphs and it does have a pressure change alarm the thermometer uh, in celsius it has a range of minus 10 to 60 degrees in 0.1 intervals it does have a 30 record memory for altitude only it doesn't have the uh, numerous uh, different uh, memory functions of the range man, but it does record altitude plus it has historical altitude and that means uh, it's got the historical maximum minimum 
uh, maximum ascent and descent that I've ever done with this watch. Next up, it's got a uh, 24 hour, one 100 second stopwatch with split measure, you know, fairly standard. It's got a 16 minute countdown timer. I've set it at, you know, just the default 10 minutes, one second interval there. Uh, five daily alarms, you know, as with almost all Casio multifunction watches. And then going to world time. So this particular world time doesn't have as many uh, time zones or city uh, designations as some, I guess, fully uh, digital models. Uh, it does have 29 cities plus UTC, and, and it covers just about all the time zones you'd be you know, using. I think essentially all the time zones and its limitation with the 30 is because the bezel designation of the cities rather than using a digital display readout. The battery here is uh, six months, uh, is rated at six months on the solar battery and 25 months if you let it sit in the dark, it goes into a power save mode where all functions are shut off, the LCD shut off and the, the hands go to the 12 o'clock position eventually, I think after I guess a, a number of days of zero light exposure, it will go into a full power save mode. The band here, so uh, going back to time, you can see there's an H there that came out. Now that's a high battery indication. It goes to M for medium, L for low, and then L flashing for more of a critical uh, battery level. Uh, the band is a resin band, but you can see there, it says carbon fiber. Uh, you know, on the other side, it's got ProTrack emboss and carbon fiber refers to the insert. And you can see there nicely on the keeper there is a pattern that emerges. And at first I wondered whether this pattern that is visible, you can see that there, whether that was actually just an imprint and not the real thing, but it is actually the real thing. There's a transparent layer of resin at the bottom and you know you can tell partly that it's real because you can see the pattern actually curves around itself uh, close to the keeper there. I don't know whether that comes through on this video, but you know, I can, I can see it with my naked eye that it does fold around there. Uh, steel, you know, buckle, of course. Okay. So that's most of the features of the watch covered here. Now, what have I particularly enjoyed about this watch? I, I think it's clearly got a super extensive range of features in a triple sensor, tough movement, solar powered module. It's, it's got so many things packed in into a, a case that's only you know 12.8 millimeters thick really you know a smidgen under 13 millimeters um, it's, it's got the atomic time if you were in the northern hemisphere particularly you've got that convenience and i think it's it really is rather elegantly packaged you know i mean in in a thin you know relatively thin module a case you know, that is quiet, you know, it's mostly black, but with orange highlights, it, it hides nicely, you know, it's stealthy, it, it certainly can fit under, uh, you know, the, a wrist cuff if you so choose to use that, uh, uh, I guess, in, in certain uh, more semi-formal occasions, it will hide under the sleeve, and not that you, you appropriately choose this, this is really more an outdoor, casual, sport uh, activity watch, uh, but, you know, it, it is elegant enough to to fit in not not like some of the g-shocks that i have uh, what's not so good about it well you know the lugs are proprietary you can see uh right there you know you, you won't be taking that out and just fitting any particular uh, uh nato strap or third party strap there you have to either uh, use the original casio straps or you get an adapter and i believe there is an adapter that can be uh, fitted onto this to to allow 22 or 23 millimeter uh, straps to be used with this watch. Uh, the resin band is not the best, you know. I think one thing that I perhaps uh, may have changed my mind on, if I had the chance, is perhaps trying the fuel composite band, or there's a titanium band uh, or bracelet. I, I might not go for titanium uh, just because of the price difference, but. The fuel composite uh, bracelet does look pretty good. I think I might be tempted to, to order, uh, you know, a, a fuel composite from Casio if I can get my hands on that, and then I'll, I'll 
of course feature this on a on a review with that if I if I get around to getting that and fitting it on the watch. I think I would enjoy the watch more if it if it was the fuel composite band. So we'll see how I go with that. Um, lastly, a couple of other comments. It is mineral glass, you know, for a watch that is, you know, six hundred dollars MSRP. Uh, I think I probably start to expect sapphire rather than mineral glass. You know, you're paying that much. You, you don't want a glass that you can possibly scratch without too much effort. Uh, and then these screws, unfortunately, they 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 rattle. Uh, see if I can. You can hear that, maybe. Right, even on the hand, if I if I put this on the wrist, you can hear that rattle. Now, you know, the person next to you won't hear it, but I can hear it, and it's uh, you know I think they could have done better than 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 that. You know that that's a little bit subpar. All right, so uh, I, let's put it on for the wrist shot. Um, right now, I, I've. Uh, shown this before in the introduction of this watch uh, that unboxing video but you know here we go again nice and you know uh, low lying on the wrist for a watch that has you know is really just packed full of features uh, now lastly I just want to mention uh, what is the difference uh, between this module and uh, the Mudmaster now this is a a more recent acquisition that that I've really started to enjoy and is really starting to take up a lot of wrist time, but you know this one is designated module five four six three. This one, you know, as you heard before, five four seven zero. What is the difference? I I can't I I can't identify any difference. The manuals look the same to me. It's got the same number of pages, the same content headings. For the life of me, this appears to be the the, the same exact functions between these two modules so if there are any Casio experts who watch this uh, please correct me please let me know if you know what the differences are because because I, I'm not able to spot any differences in the functions between these two modules of course the Mudmaster the Mudmaster have an MSRP of uh, 750 US uh, what are you getting on top of a, a ProTrack well you're getting G-Shock so shock resistance you're getting vibration resistance uh, mud and dust resistance, and you're getting sapphire glass in this particular model. You know, so that, that's and you're getting a, you know, a, a whole lot more watch, of course, in terms of uh, just you know just the chunkiness. So that that's really, uh, as far as I can tell, that's what you're paying for uh, when you when you you know dish out for the Mudmaster versus the 6100 Pro Track. So there you have it, guys. You know, it's a little bit lengthy, but you know, lots to talk about in this uh, particular ProTrack triple sensor tough solar multifunction watch let me know what you think uh, you know it's really been so full featured uh, it is it's really packed with stuff isn't it uh, thank you guys again for watching this far and as always i will catch you next time <laughs>